Yeah, we're here at the town hall in, Ken in uh, Wells. This is Jeffrey Soleil Phillips reporting for Portland Public Access. I've spoken to the Public Utilities Commission. I've spoken to the Attorney General's Office. I've spoken to the Department of Health and Human Services. I've spoken to the Department of Environmental Protection. It's clear to me that none of us knows enough about this issue. And I'm not just talking about water. I'm talking about what happens if this municipality, this water district engages in a contract. And I'm talking about a water district that is established by state legislature, okay? So what we have to concern ourselves with is local and state control of the resource that we potentially lose if we engage in a contract with a multinational corporation. Because then we have to submit to international law under NAFTA. And this is why we need to have the citizens, the Maine Citizens Policy Trade Commission weigh in on this. It's why we need to have the Public Utilities Commission weigh in on this. As a result of these folks asking me to get involved, I have submitted legislation an act to protect Maine's groundwater. Not my brain scheme, not my idea. These folks have asked me, as they're asking you, to listen to them. And as Tom Walton pointed out, as an elected official, each and every one of us, our obligation is to these people. Um, I'd like to hear from the town attorney um, how NAFTA uh, impacts this issue and our potential vote. And I'm not a member of Save the Water, Save the Whales, Save the World. But I am concerned <clears throat> about dozens of tankers rolling through town every day. I assure you that we are not in any way trying to harm the Kenny Bunk Port Wells Water District. We are asking for this moratorium because we want to allow the citizens of Wells to decide if they wish to allow a high impact uh, business. That's what massive extraction of water is about. And we're asking for the opportunity for the citizens to explore this. Maybe they want to go ahead and say that we're well protected, but let's find that out. And in the meantime, we would like the moratorium to protect not just the water district's land, but private citizens, there basically is today loose laws. And we feel that the citizens need to decide how we want to, who we want to control the water and who we would like to be the stewards. We are not attacking Poland Springs. No record of any violation, nothing in writing of any kind. We do know, however, that downstream of the brook until 2007, we did not allow as much water down there as we did in 2007. Uh, the, we want to allow more water down there to meet yet unestablished requirements, but we, we want to get a lot of water down the brook, or at least something representative of historic flows. That's why we've been developing groundwater wells for years. We already started the process of getting our permits through DEP months ago, many months ago, before any of this came up. We've already been in the stream with DEP since last year on this process. There's a new regulation that's coming out. We volunteered to be the first utility in the state to go into the scrutiny of the water withdrawal certificate process under the newly uh, written chapter 587 on water withdrawal rules on all surface water supplies in the state of Maine. We're the first utility in the state to go through it and this has been plugged in for many months. Private investor owned utility that dealt with Poland Spring and it was actually an intermediary company that did the direct dealing with Poland Spring. Uh, this is a water district contract uh, most contracts or most arrangements Poland Spring has in the state of Maine relate to uh, they can withdraw as much as their permit allows, the DEP permit. Our contract at the time, and should we ever go there again, I think at some day we should look at this again. And I'll be honest, won't happen for months, won't happen for a year or more, but we should look at this. We've got to keep in mind environmental stewardship and fiscal responsibility here. The issue is us, not the multinationals, not bottles and petroleum. But the difference, again, in Freiburg was a private investor-owned utility that doesn't have to deal with public in any way, shape, or form, and a contract that was done with a, an intermediary company that was between the uh, water utility and them. 
Uh, also, other issues that apparently, and I'm not here for Poland Spring, by the way, it may sound that way. I'm here for KKW and for you people, and I want you to make a good decision based on the facts. Don't be scared into a decision based on the facts. We've been doing this since 1895. I've been doing it wow. since 76. Anyway, I I'm sorry. I'm we sorry. Have, we have a long okay. term. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just. So the answer is, it was a different deal, and the legal thing had to do with uh, the selectmen changing their mind or something on a contract, and that was, that was what it was. In order to prove that they changed it or something. <coughs> uh, good evening, rather. My name is Randy Siever. I do not live in Wells. I'm only taking the opportunity to speak because it seems like people wanted me to say something. Um, but I'd much rather get my time or let people from Wells speak. But I would just say that we are here uh, this evening to observe. This is a local issue. Um, we always want uh, communities to be involved. That's how we've been doing business. I work with Poland Spring in the permitting processes only. You can tell I'm not a public speaker. And I will be happy to be here. I have some information I can give you um, just to um, have all the information. And I do think that the concerns being raised here tonight are very valid concerns. And they do deserve um, a public vetting. <coughs> and uh, there's been a lot of, unfortunately, mischaracterizations of what we do at Poland Spring. Can you tell us? You handle the permitting. I, I work with them in part of, as part of the permitting process. Yes, sir. Can you tell us some of the state procedures you have to go through to permit a, an extraction site? The, how many bureaus of the state agent, of state agencies, do you have to deal with? And what's your opinion of the level of safety those agencies provide for the abutters of the project? Is that's my major concern. Right. I can't. I'm not prepared to go into real deep detail, although I could, and I can give you names and numbers of people who will be able to and could answer the questions in much more detail. And I'm not trying at all to be evasive. I just if he fills his truck at his house in Dayton and comes down to Wells to fill a swimming pool, he can't do it. He comes the fire truck, decides to go down to the beach, fill up the water, and take it out. You just relax for a second, and I'll explain what you're trying to say. We have a pond in the town of Wells that we fill with water. We have to fill it because it's a dry fire hydrant. I don't know if Danny's still here, but I found about it, out about this yesterday. I had the, uh, the experience some years back of going through an entire BEP, Board of Environmental Protection, and DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, hearing. I had the experience of representing uh, some of my neighbors in a process before the Public Utilities Commission to a full, a full set of hearings. And frankly, if anybody's sitting in this audience and thinks that your rights and the quality of your life are going to be protected by the State Bureau of Environmental Protection, the State Department of Environmental Protection, or the Public Utilities Commission, talk to me later. I've got several bridges I want to sell you really cheap. Thank you. Thank That's you. not how it works. And I hope that folks will put the time and energy into crafting an ordinance that works for this community in the time that, that we have to, to do that. Right now, extraction is not even allowed, except for where it might be grandfathered. When we write the ordinance, it may be allowed. So, so what are you going to do? My major concern is now, and always has been, that a landowner should have the rights to his property. If rainfall falls on my property, and water accumulates under my soil that I pay taxes on, I should have the rights to that water, at least to be able to bottle some of it and sell it if I choose to. Oh, yeah. That's the way America was founded. You know, I understand that there's a movement afoot today to take those rights away from us. All in favor? All opposed? 